Magandang buhay! Yours truly, Mrs. Anami L. Kulasi, presenting an original action research entitled Develop Contextualized Learning Activity Sheets, a Strategy in Improving ELSEN Participation to the Learning Process. As the grade level chairperson, it is my duty to ensure a healthy and engaging learning environment for all types of learners in our school. For the uh, previous school year when this study was conducted, there were seven identified learners with special education needs or the LSEN in the grade 10 level enrolled in the modular class. They were included in the regular section and probably they will be using the same learning module and the learning plan. During the first quarter, it was observed that these learners were poorly participating due to non-submission. And according to their parents, even they have tablets and internet, the learners could hardly follow and them as parents cannot promise to guide them due to lack of knowledge. This study pursued with its trust to that its core values, mission, and vision mandating to protect and promote the right of every Filipino to quality, equitable, culture-based, and complete basic education. And also stated there is the role of the teacher and that uh, drove the researcher, me, to pursue this study. The objectives of this study are as follows. First is the engagement of the ELSEN or the learners with special education needs to learning process through the help of the, uh, the developed class or the contextualized learning answer sheets. And of course, hopefully, this developed class will introduce and promote the development of contextualized and localized learning answer sheet for the graded ELSEN in our school community. This study has the following research questions. First is, what is the evaluation of the experts and science teachers on the developed contextualized and localized learning activity sheets in terms of content? the format, the presentation and organization, and accuracy and updatedness of information. Number two, is there any significant difference on the performance of the participants before and after the administration of the contextualized learning activity sheets? And number three, what are the suggestions and comments of the parents of the participants on the developed contextualized and localized learning answer sheets? For the methodology, the developed learning answer sheet was MELK and LNS based following the lesson for the current quarter. It was contextualized in the sense of localizing the instruction and providing activities that hopefully fits the learning capabilities of the target participants. Experts composed of master teachers and SPED coordinator and the selected science teachers, particularly the key teachers, were considered as validators of the material. The researcher adopted the LRMDS tool for validating the print material. The administration of material was done through, the commu through communicating with the parent. The parents were oriented on the use of developed learning answer sheets supported with the developed and localized weekly home learning plan. The parents were also instructed as to when and how they will be administering the pre-test, the learning answer sheet, and the post-test. After the retrieval of the outputs, the data were gathered and statistically treated using mean, SD, and t-test. The result of the study was presented to the SPED coordinator and the school-based research committee for the record, consultation, and improvement. And uh, for the result, Table 6 data summarizes the springboard of this study presenting the performance of the ELSEN participants to Science 10 Quarter 2 Weeks 1 and 2 outputs. Noticeably, there were records of non-submission, co answers copied from the answer key, late submission, and as I said, there were seven um, enrolled ELSEN 
participants, but then the sixth and the seventh were not able to comply. Good day, everyone. Allow me to present our humble attempt to qualitatively investigate the experiences of ESL learners in a modular distance learning environment. So this paper is entitled ESL Learners' Motivations, Challenges, and Coping Strategies in a Modular Distance Learning Environment. So for my presentation outline, I will talk about the introduction of the study, the methodology used, the results and its discussion, and finally, its conclusions. So for the introduction, in the COVID-19 context, students learn English by just reading and trying to understand their modules independently using printed or digital formats. These students are using self-learning modules according to Liego in 2020. And modular distance learning is one of the alternative delivery modalities that is available in the Philippine educational setting. And it is somehow difficult for the students to study English in the senior high school because the English subjects in the senior high school I, are more of an advanced English subjects. And then previous studies has also examined how vital education is, especially in the current crisis. Unlike previous studies, this study will focus on the motivations of students to overcome impediments and maintain flexibility. In addition, this is the first study to examine students throughout their current ESL modular distance learning experience. So this study will focus on the motivation, challenges, and the ways of coping with modular distance learning learners face in modular distance learning. So the students struggle in this time of pandemic that is more challenging than before because there are probably other factors that affect students' learning in the said modality. At the same time, different distractions come from their study areas, leading to poor performance or motivation of the students in distance learning. Specifically, the study would like to answer the following research questions. Number one, what are the motivations and challenges of ESL learners in a modular distance learning setup? And finally, how do ESL learners cope with the challenges of learning the English language in a modular distance learning setup? So for the methodology, the study utilized qualitative descriptive research to describe the ESL learners' experiences in modular distance learning. So the study will gather information using an online qualitative survey to elicit information from the participants, even though they are far. And at the same time, there will be 28 senior high school students who will be the who are the participants of the study that came from the division of Rizal. So the following, the, the students were chosen based on the following considerations. Number one, they need to be under MDL modality. Second one, they need to be senior high school students from DepEd Rizal. Third, they must have access to the internet despite being in, a, in the modular distance learning because they will be answering the, the qualitative survey uh, using Google Forms. And uh, most importantly, they have to be willing to take part in the study. So as much as the study would like to have many participants, students under modular distance learning have limited access to the internet when the study was carried out. Next. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is James Carlo L. R. Ville, and I will be presenting to you a research entitled Virtual Interactive Earthquake Grill, its effect on the disaster preparedness of kindergarten learners. According to Masen and Osofsky, millions of children are affected by earthquakes each year. According to Barnes, disaster plans are ineffective for children's readiness. Approaches more appropriate for children are deeply needed Innovations appropriate for the new normal 
is a must. This virtual interactive drill was tested for ODL kindergarten learners. It was validated by our district DRRM coordinator and our school kindergarten teachers. This can be used in smart devices such as laptops, tablets, and smartphones. This can increase the knowledge of the learners regarding earthquake preparedness. These are some features of our learners using the interactive EQ drill. What are the research questions before the intervention? Is there a significant difference between the test scores of the experimental and control group after the intervention? Is there a significant difference between the test scores of the experimental and control group? Last one. Is there an improvement in the test scores of the experimental and control group after the intervention? The participants of this study are ODL kindergarten learners. 20 learners for the experimental group and 20 learners for the control group. This research is experimental by design. Experimental group was given the virtual interactive EQ drill intervention. The control group was not given. How did we analyze our data? For question number one, we use independent samples t-test. Question number two, independent samples t-test also. And for the last question, we use paired samples t-test. Let's go to the findings. For the pre-test, there was no significant difference between the two groups. For the post-test, there was a recorded significant difference. Let's go to the improvement of scores for the experimental group. Yes, there was a recorded significant improvement. For the control group, there was no recorded significant improvement. Let's go to the conclusions, recommendations, and implications. The intervention improved the children's knowledge regarding earthquake preparedness. This intervention can serve as a contribution to disaster preparedness plans. Of course, this was suited for the pandemic or the new normal. This can be an additional learning material in delivering earthquake drills for children. Again, this is designed for smart devices. It can be used for distance learning. And of course, this is definitely usable for the face-to-face -face class setting. This is our list of references and our documentation. We leave you with this code. Thank you for listening. everyone. I am Jerlyn L. Dacalos from Tanay Senior High School, Division of Rizal. The title of my research is Acceptability of Scilab Experiments at Home in Developing Scientific Skills in the Teaching of General Biology 2. Introduction. With the present situation nowadays, one of the major intervention concerns in teaching science, especially the specialized subjects in STEM strand, like Gen Bio 1 and 2 and Gen Chem 1 and 2, is how the students practice hands-on learning. Since senior high school is the door to what course the students will choose in college, it is very important that they experience and manipulate laboratory apparatus and perform certain laboratory experiments. This will also help them explore the lessons. 
Though some experiments can use innovative and localized materials, there are certain experiments that need to use the actual science apparatus for the result to be more scientific and accurate. It is observed by the researchers that most of the time, few science laboratory experiments were introduced to, to do at home and used in learning subjects such as GenBio2, which is lacking in shaping the scientific skills of the students. Since the subject is focusing on experiments, outputs are needed important in order to be evaluated and graded using rubrics. It is with the aforementioned reason that led the researchers to find out that the utilization of the SILAB experiments at home in developing scientific skills in the teaching of GenBio2 to the students at Panay Senior High School is applicable to the new normal setup as determined by the teacher respondent. For the significance of the study, the result of the study can be used as an aid in developing scientific skills in performing different laboratory experiments, even at home. The students use different laboratory apparatus given on the activity sheets that help them practice and develop scientific skills. For the methodology, the subjects of the study were the 28 grade 11 STEM students and the 10 teacher respondents who are experts in the field of science to determine the level of acceptability. The study used the purposive sampling technique. The researcher used the quantitative research, the descriptive evaluate, evaluative as a research design. The researcher utilized the three SILAB experiments at home activity sheets performed during the first semester school uh, second set of the subject of the school year from May 2022 to June 2022. The five-point Likert scale and questionnaire checklist were used. Mean and discussion of the results was used to determine the level of acceptability of the SILAB experiments at home. Results and discussion. Table 1, the level of acceptability of the SILAB experiments at home with respect to the objective. The given contents under the objectives in the questionnaire checklist are very much accepted by the experts, with the overall weighted mean of 4.88. That simply implies that the SILAB experiments at home in terms of objectives are attainable, congruent to the lesson, suit the topic, and fitted to the level and needs of the students. The researcher recommends that in order to develop scientific skills of the students, even at home, the students should execute scientific experiments in the form of SILAB experiments at home. Same is true with Table 2 with respect to the content with the overall mean of 4.86, which is very much accepted. The researcher recommends that in order to develop scientific skills of the students, specifically in terms of the content and objective and the materials of the SILAB experiments, it is better to utilize teacher-made SILAB experiments at home to further target the needs of the students in developing their scientific skills. And in table number three, with respect to the laboratory activities, it is with the overall weighted mean of 4.72, which is very much accepted by the expert, the researcher recommends that the use of the SILAB experiments at home in, is applicable in the distance learning modality when pandemic arises. And this is for the conclusion of the SILAB experiments at home. And as well as the recommendations. Thank you very much. The use of the Have a pleasant day, everyone. We are pleased to share our action research titled Inputs of Receiving Teachers, a Basis for the Development of Slot Session Guide for the Implementation of Inclusive Education in the New Normal. We started this research as the COVID pandemic was starting, but its relevance goes beyond the pandemic. 
especially now that we are returning to in-person instruction. Inclusive education implementation poses tremendous challenges, specifically among our civil teachers. Some of these challenges include the following. Lack of knowledge in inclusive education, lack of teaching strategies, lack of learning resources, and not being skilled in the use of sign language. And the COVID pandemic has intensified these challenges. Therefore, as a proposed intervention, we conducted action research by developing slot session guides that would serve as a training plan for receiving teachers. And we utilized the ADI model to develop session guides consisting of five stages. Our action research was guided by these following questions. What topics should be prioritized in the school-based learning action cell for implementing inclusive education of learners with special educational needs in the new normal? Second, how do receiving teachers assess the level of their competencies covering the knowledge, skills, and attitudes in the identified priority topics? Third, what slack session guide may be developed and validated to enhance the competencies of receiving teachers? This action research made use of the descriptive developmental research design using a purposive sampling in selecting the respondents. A total of 35 receiving teachers from junior and senior high school who are teaching LSENS became the participants in the study. And for the data gathering methods, we use the following. The online topic prioritization survey tool, the online teacher's needs assessment survey tool, and the session guide validating tool. These tools were validated for being high valid. And for our data analysis, we made use of the following. Frequency and percentage, the weighted mean, and ranking. Question of results for research question number one. What topics should be prioritized in the school-based lack for implementing inclusive education? They identified priority topics in the SLAC as reported by the receiving teachers who were the following, teaching methods and strategies being the first in rank, learning styles of LSEN and basic sign language rank 2.5, and accommodation and modification topic rank 4 with 59.30%. For problem number two, how the receiving teachers assess the level of their competencies covering the knowledge, skills, and attitudes in the identified priority topics. In every identified priority topic, the general assessment of competency level of receiving teachers in knowledge, skills, and attitudes is verbally interpreted as satisfactory, meaning the receiving teachers would benefit from further training and continuing professional development. For problem number three, what slack session guide may be developed and validated to enhance the competencies of receiving teachers in a new normal? With the help of 14 validators, the, uh, they strongly agree that all the session guides that are made have objectives that are measurable and attainable. The session guides have adequate activities which are aligned in the objectives and the session guides are helpful, valuable, and relevant to the teacher's needs. For our conclusions, first, receiving teachers identified essential or priority topics vis-a-vis -vis implementation of inclusive education in the new normal that would make them equipped and knowledgeable in handling learners' special educational needs. Receiving teachers would further benefit from the continuing professional development, such as LAC, to enhance their competencies. Third, the developed session guides are relevant to the teacher's needs, helpful and valuable in the implementation of inclusive education. For our recommendations, school leaders are recommended and encouraged to maximize the use of continuing professional development, such as LAC, for the betterment of the teachers. Second, similar study related to inclusive education implementation and development of session guides are hereby recommended for comparison and validation. Thank, Thank you for listening. listening. God, God bless and, and mabuhay.
Good day, everyone. I'm Alvin Insorio, together with my wife, Jorlyn Insorio, from SDO San Pedro City. It's our honor to present to you our action research entitled Messenger Lectures and Video Lessons as Mathematics Intervention for Modular Distance Learning. Modular distance learning causes learning difficulties among the students in the new normal, particularly in mathematics, where the lessons in the modules are not easy to understand and have limited explanation examples. Hence, teacher's instruction regarding what activities and performance tasks need to accomplish every week is done through group chat in Messenger. Learning mathematics in the new normal through distance education is challenging. It has been observed from the output submitted by the students that they are struggling to answer the learning activities and performance tasks, which call the attention of the math teachers to implement interventions via Messenger. Based on the different literature, students are struggling in learning the content of the modules and parents are not capable of helping their children to answer the activities and do the performance tasks. However, Messenger can be used as a platform for academic learning. Hence, teacher-made videos can be used to improve students' learning via online platforms because integrating video lessons into modular distance learning increases the students' performance effectively. So this study anchored on the cognitive theory of multimedia learning that posits that in making videos or lectures, we need to combine different figures, concepts, illustrations to make it understandable to the learners. Also, the study followed the Plan Do Study Act model of action research in implementing the intervention, messenger lecture, and video lessons. The study is a practical action research from the two sections of grade 7, students under basic education at Pasita Complex National High School for school year 2021-2022. One group is assigned as control group, while the other group is experimental group receiving intervention from the teacher. The instrument used were test materials, survey questionnaire, and interview guide question. Based on the findings, so experimental group, pre-test, and the control group pre-test has no significant difference since the p-value is 0 0.410. However, the post-test result from the experimental group and control group has significant difference with the p-value of 0 0.00. For the table 2 shows the per sample t-test for significant difference in the effect size. So based on the data, experimental group pre-test post-test has significant difference because the p-value is 0 0.000. The same with the control group, the pre-test and post-test have significant difference. However, considering the coins D and percentage change, the experimental group has the highest practical value or effect size. Based on the survey, messenger lecture and video lessons help the students to improve their mathematical competencies and perform better in their activities. However, during the interview, the students suggested some of the activities that the teacher must do. First, regular posting of the video lessons and lectures, more examples found in the video lessons, more explanation given by the teacher, and the teacher must talk smoothly and the voice must be clear for the students using the local language. So for the implication, messenger lecture and video lessons guide the students to understand mathematics lesson comfortably. Students perceive that their consumption of the messenger lectures and video lessons help them understand mathematics lesson better. Students are more confident in answering the module activities and performing the assigned tasks in a self-paced manner. Messenger lectures and video lessons help the students academically and equip them with mathematical competencies. These interventions have positive effect on the students' academic performance in mathematics. Students became more confident, competent, and interested in answering the module activities. For the recommendation, there should be action research implemented intended for longer period of time in the different schools to measure the effectiveness of messenger lecture and video lessons. Furthermore, future researchers may conduct through experimental design to establish the effectiveness of the said interventions. Here's our references. Thank you and God bless from San Pedro City. Mabuhay.
Good day everyone, I'm Charisse Manaloto, Master Teacher to San Pedro Location Center National High School. Together with my co-authors, Alvin Owen Sor and Janet J. Larena, it's our honor to present our study entitled Building Awareness, Interest, and Readiness Towards College Course Through Work Immersion. Grade 12 students must experience work immersion in the second semester as part of Philippine education curriculum. Work immersion provides a learning experience for the graduating students in the field of work related to their preferred college course on school premises relevant to job market needs. This situation is a tremendous challenge for work immersion teachers to maximize work-related experiences following the government restrictions. Education must continue whatever the challenges arises, utilizing the available resources and collaboration among stakeholders. This study aimed to build the awareness, interest, and readiness of grade 12 young students towards the preferred college course through work immersion under a blended learning modality. The study leaned on the experiential learning theory, the plan to study act mode of action research employed. The details in each part of ADSA were clearly written and done by the researchers. The study utilized a practical action design. The participants were 181 grade 12 young students. 20 of them voluntarily joined the interview via phone or face-to-face. -face. Surveys questionnaire to elicit the students' awareness, interest, and readiness level in their preferred college course and semi-structured interviews to elicit the qualitative data. The three head teachers validated the said questionnaire to establish the consent validity. For data gathering, a letter of permission from the school had was secured first. First survey was administered online for two weeks to measure the students' prior awareness, interest, and readiness in their preferred college courses. After the work immersion, the post survey was administered online. Semi structured interviews were conducted. The study used frequency, percentage, and median to, be, to describe the quantitative data. Shafiri Wick for normality of data, Levine's test for the homogeneity of variances, Wilkoxon signed rank test for the significant difference in the student's level of awareness, interest, and readiness before and after work immersion implementation, Kruska Wallace Edge test, and Man Whitney U test for the significant difference based on the demographic variables. SPSS version 23 was used for computation, while thematic analysis was employed for qualitative data from the interview. Figure 2 shows that students' awareness level of their preferred college courses. There's an increase in students' level of awareness of college course. Figure 3 implies that the work immersion helps the students to become more interested in their preferred college course. Figure 4 means that the work immersion under blended learning helps the students to become ready to face the college life. Table 4 shows that the students' awareness of preferred college courses. Table 5 shows the interest in the preferred college course increased after the work immersion implementation. In Table 6, the students were ready to face a preferred college course. Table 7 means that the work immersion implementation increased the students' level of awareness, interest, and readiness in the preferred college course. Table 8 means that regardless of sex, students have the same level of variables as mentioned. In Table 9 means that the students have the same level of variables regardless of age. Table 10 means that there were a group of students based on preferred college courses that significantly differ in the level of awareness and interest. 11 shows that significant differences exist in both level of awareness and interest. However, criminology and psychology groups significantly differ only in interest level, while education and psychology groups significantly differ in awareness level. Through work immersion, students acquire knowledge and increase their communication and social skills. They become motivated, decided, inspired, and prepared to face college life. College awareness becomes higher due to the student-teacher interaction and webinars with speakers from the fieldwork. They become highly interested in building their knowledge and skills and ready to face the challenges in college. In Figure 6, students' suggestions to improve the implementation of work immersion under blended learning. More webinars and activities, more learning materials, frequent face-to-face -face interaction, student committee, and parental involvement in webinars. After the implementation, they all increase and significant differences exist before and after. No significant difference exists when the responses were grouped based on sex and age. A significant difference in awareness and interest levels was established based on the preferred college course. The work immersion experiences made the students knowledgeable about the college course and the skills needed. They become skillful in communication and socialization. They become more motivated and decisive to pursue a degree course. Moreover, they were ready and inspired to face the challenges in college life. For recommendations, more webinars and activities with parental involvement, more learning materials, frequent face-to-face -face interaction with the teacher and the student, a student committed that constantly communicated with each other, and as much as possible, similar study in other school for more extended implementation period. The references of our study. Good day, everyone. My name is Dr. Raisel V. Huko from Santa Rosa Elementary School Central T, together with my school head, Dr. Catherine M. Lassa. 
our research entitled Project SPIDO, School Prevention and Intervention of Dropouts in SRES Central 3 of the Division of Santa Rosa City, Input for Policy Formulation. Context and rationale. When a school does not achieve a 100% enrollment rate, there are consequences. One of the numerous causes is the school's high dropout rate. A root cause analysis was undertaken at Santa Rosa Elementary School Central 3 on the elements that influence students dropping out of classes. According to the findings, socioeconomic position or financial resources, low academic achievement and the teacher-learner connection are the primary causes of student dropout. Thus, the team leader together with her co-leader organized Project SPIDO. This project will highlight the importance of remedial teaching through the use of crafted teaching materials, home visitation, and even intensifying the school-based feeding program to reduce the dropout rate. In this regard, school home learning will be easily monitored by the teachers. Our research questions, what is the dropout rate of the school before the implementation of Project SPIDO? Second, what is the dropout rate of the school after the implementation of Project SPIDO? Third, is there a significant difference between the dropout rate of the school before and after the implementation of Project SPIDO? And fourth, based on the results of the study, what policy can be formulated? Proposed Intervention, Innovation, and Strategy Project SPIDO, or the School Prevention and Intervention of Dropouts is a project to have access in education. The goal of this project is to decrease the number of implementing or number of dropouts at the end of school year. Different activities were conducted in implementing this project. First, analyze SF4. Second, intensify SBFP and 4 ps Third, conduct weekly stand for modular distance learning. Fourth, conduct home visitation following the IATF protocol. Fifth, allow the students to shift from another modality. Next is analyze the monthly enrollment and dropout rate. And then the last one is crafting of intervention materials that we'll be using for the remedial teaching. Our methodology. From the respondents, proposive sampling technique was used. The respondents of the study are the students who are at risk of dropping out from Santa Rosa Elementary School Central T. The gathering of data involved three phases. Phase 1 is the validating and testing reliability of the project SPIDO. Phase 2 implementation of project SPIDO. Phase 3 is the assessment of the effectiveness of the project SPIDO. To test the effectiveness of project SPIDO before and after the implementation, independent t-test was used. Here are results and discussions. Table 1 shows the dropout rate of the school before the implementation of project SPIDO. From school year 2017-2018, the dropout rate is 0 0.68, while from 2018-2019, the dropout rate is 0 0.51, and 2019-2020, the dropout rate became 0 0.16. Table 2 shows the dropout rate of the school after the implementation of Project SPIDO. From school year 2020-2021 up to 2021-2022, the dropout rate became 0%. Meaning to say, the project speed or the implementation of project speed was effective. Table 3 shows the test of significant difference between the dropout rate before and after the implementation of project speed. It can be gleaned from the table that before or it can be gleaned from the table that the mean difference is negative 0 0.45, while the computed p-value is negative 5.00. This implies that there is a significant difference between the dropout rate of SRES Central 3 before and after the implementation of Project SPIDO. Seemingly, after the implementation of Project SPIDO, there is a decrease of the dropout rate. There is an implication that as the school uses the Project SPIDO, the dropout rate of the school decreases. And for our conclusion, an intervention program entitled Project SPIDO, School Prevention and Intervention of Dropouts, composed of seven activities for parents, teachers, and students at risk of dropping out, was proposed. Objectives were set together with the key result areas. Then target areas are identified to measure if the objectives are realized, after which strategies were planned wherein the activities, resources, program duration were identified. It can be concluded that the dropout rate of the school becomes zero after the implementation of this project is pedo. After completing the program, a policy will be formulated. For our implications, knowing the effectiveness of this project is pedo, the school will use different activities to continuously maintain the zero dropout rate of the school. Second, Determine what strategic planning to be used in, 
in dealing with the students who have a hard time in adapting the better normal approach in learning, including the assessments and blended distance learning. And finally, the adopted policy will help the school in maintaining the dropout rate of the school. Good day everyone, I'm Sir Paolo Mangobos from SDO Santa Rosa City. Together with me is our lead proponent, Sir Irvin Rodriguez from the City Planning Office of Santa Rosa City. The title of our study is Feasibility in Establishing a City College in Santa Rosa, Laguna. Foundation for Creating School Development Plan. For context and rationale, Santa Rosa is a first-class component city, the motor city and investment hub of the South and it is home to 110 manufacturing companies, creating at least 10,000 jobs annually. It is in great demand of degree holder workforce for technical and business. However, poverty is still a challenge, which attributes to the workforce education level. It has a dilemma with scarcity on higher education institutions, wherein there are only seven available HEIs, where six were private and one is public, which is the PUP Santa Rosa. Graduating senior high school students subsidized by the city government is at 1,373, while PUP Santa Rosa can only accommodate up to 800 freshmen annually. Indeed, 573 is already the assured gap, plus those within the cut of grades. Good day everyone, I'm Noel H. Natividad, the Education Program Supervisor of SDO Santa Rosa City, and I'm here to present to you my research entitled, By Their Own Volition, Understanding the Persona of the Senium Seasoned Educators. To start with, for the introduction, as we all know in the Philippines, promotions for veterans teachers are included in the Section 1 of Magna Carta for Public School Teachers or Republic Act 4670. Nonetheless, roadblocks are still present, somehow gluing seasoned educators in an entry-level position for their whole career. This study is the qualitative tradition aimed to describe and understand the lived experiences of public school teachers in one of the city schools in Laguna, Philippines, who have rendered more than 20 years and above in service and yet remain in a teacher one level entry position. Framed with transcendental phenomenology, the study covered 10 purposefully sampled educators through field notes and in-depth interviews. For the research question, again, this research aimed to determine the lived experiences of public high school teachers in the division of Santa Rosa City, who rendered the senior years and above in an in a service and yet in a teacher one level entry position. Specifically, it worked out on the following central question. Number one, what are the live experiences of the senior seasoned educators as teacher one by their own volition? And number two, how do the teacher participants face the challenges of being a decennium teacher one by their own volition? And here are some of the research methodology used by the researcher in order to determine the findings or the expected findings of the study. Number one, descriptive method using transcendental phenomenology approach through purposeful criterion sampling was utilized. The re this research is composed of 10 public school teachers as the main instrument of the study. Observation and interview protocol guide was also used. Semi-structured or in-depth interview was used to gather information using the participant's own knowledge and perception. After determining the data, team clustering or cluster of meanings, textural and structural descriptions, presentation of overall essence, and verification of responses for credibility purposes were also conducted. And lastly, the validation and treatment of the analyzed data from the transcription. So after gathering the data from the transcriptions and the responses from the participants as to the live experiences of the senior seasoned educators as teacher one by their own volition, the following structural themes were generated. Number one, impediments on seeking work progression. Number two, passion over promotion. 
Number three, downfall of stagnation. Number four, capacitating seasoned educators. And number five, retirement plans. On the other hand, as to how teacher participants face the challenges of being the senior seasoned educators by their own volition, the following teams were also generated. Team six, work advancement as a personal volition. Team seven, student focused mindset. Number eight, hurdling through challenges. Team nine, implementing guiding tools. And team 10 moves towards actualization. After determining the 10 clustered teams, the following recommendations were made. Number one, capacitating teachers in the development of their career progression. Number two, the senior season teachers must be guided by the organization for them to meet the criteria set by the education department to advance their rankings. Number three, strengthening the implementation of the Philippine professional standards for teachers, most especially in the midst of the health emergencies. Number four, orientation on the nature and process of promotion should be conducted yearly to address the existing issues and concerns when it comes to promotion. For the future research, future qualitative researchers are encouraged to conduct another inquiry about the phenomenon covering different local of investigation and different set of participants to explore more the educational implication of the studied phenomenon. Another one, the future quantitative researchers are also exhorted to conduct similar study covering multiple locales and relatively higher number of respondents. And here are some of the references. And to end up my presentation, I would like to give you some of this quote, that quality of an education system can never exceed the quality of its teachers. With that, thank you very much and good day, everyone. Good day, I am Raul Oferdi Marcelo, Teacher 3 of Applian National High School, Maine. Together with me is Dr. Ferlin Arlibao and Mrs. Redivina P. Macalinao. Our research title is Gigabyte Kit and Intervention Materials for Marginalized Students. Now, for the context and rationale, in 2020, a lot of changes in the educational processes and landscape were seen in the Philippines due to pandemic situation. The COVID-19 has paralyzed the whole education system, making all learners, whether public or private institutions, suffered and vulnerable. Moreover, in the modular distance learning modality, learners are required to accomplish the learning tasks independently. They need to acquire various skills that will help them execute those assigned tasks successfully. In this sense of enhancing providing quality education is important, thus different competencies must be developed among learners to handle the task without much reliance on teachers' instructions. With this being said, the researchers tries to examine the effectiveness of the supplementary interactional, interactive video-based materials and interactive worksheets in enhancing the learner's academic performance through modular distance learning. This also aims to determine the effectiveness of the interactive instructional video-based worksheets, which are product of the said project, the Project Gigabyte. This study aims to answer the following research question. One, what is the pretest course of the students before the utilization of Project Gigabyte? Two, what is the postest course of the students after the utilization of the Project Gigabyte? And number three, is there a significant difference in the performance of the students before and after utilizing the project Gabay? For the proposed intervention, innovation, and strategy, this action research focus on acceptability and effectiveness of the Gabay kit and intervention materials for marginalized students. This study utilized a quasi-experimental research design the study was conducted at Applied National High School in the Division of Central Russell City, Laguna, during school year 2021-2022. The participants were the select grade 10 students from NHS under mathematics, Filipino, and early Panlipunan subjects. The students were selected by a match pairing, and the students were given IGA by kit to be used in their lesson. The said kit was a USB device loaded with the developed and validated video-based instructional materials and interactive worksheets that can be accessed even offline or with no internet connectivity. As you can see in the picture, this is the sample or these are the sample 
video lessons together with the link that where in you can access. For the result and discussion, as reported, out of 20 items in the pretest and the highest and lowest scores, the respondents from each group got were 16 and 2 respectively, both with a mean of 7.94 with a descriptive of interpretation of the mean. It was found out that the respondents in the experimental group which utilized the videos from Gigabyte obtained a high mean score in the first and the second formative test. On the other hand, the comparison of group obtained average score of 12.61. The table indicates that the respondents in the experimental group obtained a very high mean score, while those in the comparison group obtained a high mean score of 15.70. The result showed an agreed acceptability of the project Gigabyte as supplementary instructional materials, respectively. Early mathematics and numeracy development is linked to language and critical thinking development based on Tall and Van 2014. It is very essential for the students to learn the basic skills and concepts in mathematics to understand the lesson in their present grade level. With the pandemic and now the full implementation of face-to-face, -face, there are students who are really struggling in understanding the concepts in mathematics. The teachers also in our school observe that there are students who are struggling in understanding the lessons in mathematics. It is because of the low mastery of foundational skills and concepts in mathematics. This is the reason why I come up with this research entitled Bridging the Gaps in Mathematics of 7th Graders Through Project 1 or Overall Numeracy Enhancement. Good afternoon everyone. I am Erist A. Kapul from Applied National High School Division of Santa Rosa City, Laguna. As the master teacher of our department, I would like to bridge the gaps in students' mathematical understanding through the implementation of Project 1. The features of Project 1 are the following. First, we have the one-to-one -one instruction. We use this kind of instruction because according to the study conducted by Layug, Velario and Capones in 2021, it is revealed that one-to-one -one tutorial is the most effective intervention that helps in improving the numeracy skills of the students. We also utilize the individualized approach model where our clienteles were given assistance depending on their level of understanding. They were also given their corresponding localized learning activity sheets. It includes different topics, discussion, examples, and 10-item assessment, as well as reflection and their parents' confirmation about the student's performance on that session. And these are the problem statements of my study. First, what is the average score of the students in the assessment before and after the implementation of Project 1? Second, is there a significant difference on the average score in the assessment of the students before and after the implementation? And third, what are the problems encountered in the implementation of Project 1? In order to answer all the queries of this paper, these are the methods used. So first, this is a mixed method wherein I use pre- and post-test assessment in order to obtain the performance of the students and interview method to determine the problems encountered in the implementation of the project. There were six students who participated in this program according to the results of the numeracy skills assessment. We also use a structured learning activity sheets which were validated by our school's conformance team and checked by our division math supervisor. To treat the data, I use mean, SD, t-test, and feedbacking mechanism. And here are the results of the study. For problem statement 1, there is an increase of 134.52% on the average scores of the students in the implementation of Project 1. 
it is now supported by the study conducted by Layog and company in 2021 that one-to-one -one tutorial is the most effective intervention that helps to improve the numeracy skills of the students. That's why I recommend to continuous utilization of Project 1 to bridge the gap in order to smoothly learn the competencies required in Math 7. As for problem statement number two, there is a significant difference between the performance of the students in pre- and post-test assessments in the implementation of Project 1 since the computed t-value is greater than the value of t which is 2.5706 with a degrees of freedom of 5 and p equals to 0 0.05. And there is actually a mean difference between the two results of the mean of negative 7.167 with a standard deviation of 1.835 and a standard error of the mean of 0 0.749 at 95% confidence level. This means that the implementation of Project 1 improved the student's numeracy which further helped the teachers to bridge the gap in the learning competencies of the students in Mathematics 7. This merely proves that one-to-one -one method of teaching which is the main element of Project 1 is effective. It has been stated that one-to-one -one will allow the teacher to get to know the students and construct lessons tailored to their learning needs as well as to motivate the students to take an active role in their learning and become more self-directed. Based on the interview conducted, there are four emerging problems met in the implementation of Project 1 and these are the following. First, low attendance rate. Second, poor fundamental skills in math and English. Third, congested content of the material. And fourth, no continuity of practice at home due to household chores and parents' inability to teach. That's why I recommend to address all the problems in the next action plan. And this is the action plan presented to our school planning team and to our dear school head. And these are my references. Thank you very much and God bless everyone. Good day everyone. I am Katrina Arguel, Project Development Officer 1 from SDO Santa Rosa City. And I'm here to present to you my research study titled Skills Mapping and Psychological First Aid Preparedness of Designated Guidance Coordinators, Basis for Inputs to Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Program. To start off with our rationale, this study aims to identify the level of skills of the designated guidance coordinators for concrete understanding of their effectiveness on the field, determine the level of preparedness of said coordinators in terms of facilitating psychological first aid or PFA, identify the significant relationship between the skills of said coordinators towards their PFA preparedness, and provide recommendations and develop a training program suited in providing assistance to disaster risk reduction and management. For our key literature, according to Gisbers, school counselors have played an integral role within the school setting since the early 1900s. It has been noted by Tinio, Castro, and Egbochoku that guidance counselors were individuals who gave assistance to learners to develop their social, emotional, and physical potentialities that may help them grow and aspire for their future and divorce. Guidance and counseling is more effective when there is a person who has the skills to facilitate the programs intended for it. As of May 2020, the Department of Education only has 1,096 active counselors and statistics show that public school need at least 41,000 registered guidance counselors. Teachers in public school who did not have RGCs were being designated as guidance coordinators. The school learner's welfare is one of the top priority of the counselor and their skills and abilities will be one of the most beneficial in line with the distressing events happening in the world such as war, natural disasters, accidents, and now the worldwide pandemic. They are significant for aiding them and proposing an intervention approach in times of crisis or, or adversities. And this is where psychological first aid comes. It is an intervention approach aimed at helping people deal with the experience and consequence of a disaster or adversity. PFA's purpose is to install feeling of safety, calmness, self, and community efficacy 
connectedness and hope. For our research question, number one, how skilled are the designated guidance coordinators in terms of the following variables? Number two, how prepared are the designated guidance coordinators with regard to the psychological first preparedness in terms of the following variables indicated below? Number three, is there a significant difference between the evaluation of the guidance coordinators with the school heads and class advisors? Number four, do the skills of the respondents have a relationship in providing enforcement to the implementation of psychological first aid preparedness? Number five, Based on the findings of the study, what possible program proposal or training matrix could be proposed with regard to the psychological first aid preparedness of the designated guidance coordinators that could be a basis in strengthening the development of programs for the disaster or the school disaster risk reduction manage and management? So for our research methodology, quantitative research method was utilized in the study. The population of the respondents was composed of 30 teachers who were designated as guidance coordinators, 30 school heads, and 109 class advisors in all 28 public schools in both elementary, junior, and senior high schools in the division of Santa Rosa City. The non-probability sampling technique was utilized and did not rely on randomization in selecting the respondents. The questionnaires given was a validated self-made sur survey questionnaire that was patterned from the ASCA school counselor competencies and the World Health Organization. So to discuss the findings, conclusion, and recommendation of the study for research question number one, it is found out that the guidance coordinator were skilled in terms of planning and preparation, delivery of guidance services, and professionalism and they are highly skilled in counseling environment. It is therefore concluded that they are exhibit or they exhibit skills aligned to the ASCA counselor competencies. Recommendation, DEPET could provide capacity building for guidance coordinators, as well as provide orientation with regard to the basic of guidance and counseling services to have an overview of the work that they are performing. Number two, it is found out that guidance coordinators are highly prepared in both modeling the skills and facilitation, and creating a safe and supportive atmosphere. They are often prepared in utilizing participatory learning and managing the time well. Conclusion, they are concluded to be someone who mastered their way in facilitating activities that could help learners improve and grow not only academically, but also socially. Recommendation, uh, guidance coordinators should continue enforcing their skills, to their level of psychological first aid preparedness that they may possible or possibly utilize in the future. Number three, uh, it is found out that there is significant difference on the evaluation of guidance coordinators, school heads, and class advisors. It is noted that guidance coordinators rated themselves lower than the school heads and class advisors rating. The impact of self-evaluation may be one of the factors of such conditions. Recommendation, the school head could schedule meetings together with the guidance coordinators. Blended learning as a multifactorial environment in the self-efficacy of select grade 12 senior high school students of Santa Rosa Science and Technology High School. For the introduction of this study, current circumstances like community lockdown and quarantine dead students and teachers around the globe who study and work from home using online learning platforms like Crawford et al. 2020. Although learning environments are personal, each individual's constructions are mediated by the actions of others in the social setting and the characteristics of the culture in which learning is situated. What actually happens over a period of time constrains the construction of what an environment is like for learning. Student perceptions of the learning environment influence learning behaviors and outcomes that, in turn, become part of the experienced learning environment of self and others. The concept of self-efficacy is strongly linked to perceptions of the learning environment Self-efficacy could alter student perceptions of the learning environment. 
In this study, it merely focuses on the learner's dimensions, the instructor dimension, and technological dimensions. This study aims to determine the relationship between dimensions of blended learning as a multifactorial environment and the level of academic self-efficacy of senior high school students of Santa Rosa Science and Technology High School. For the methodology of this study, the present study will utilize 137 of 211 grade 12 students of Santa Rosa Science and Technology High School during school year 2020 to 2021 who are studying under blended learning as its respondents. The number of respondents was computed through Slovin's formula, and respondents were identified through simple random sample. Data from respondents will be gathered through questionnaires. The questionnaire for assessing the dimension under the blended learning environment will be adapted from Sanit in 2008. Meanwhile, a questionnaire of academic self-efficacy will be adapted from Bomber, Erickson, and Munan 2018. Questionnaires were tested for reliability through COVAX Alpha. Results and discussion. Table 4.2. Select grade 12 senior high school respondents rating on blended learning as multifactorial environment within the learner dimension. Table 6.2. Select grade 12 senior high school Respondents rating on blended learning as multifactorial environment within the technology dimension. Table 7.2 Level of self efficacy of the select grade 12 senior high school students in Santa Rosa Science and Technology High School. Table 8 Correlation of respondents rating on blended learning as a multifactorial environment within the learner dimension and the level of self efficacy select grade 12 senior high school students in Santa Rosa Science and Technology High School. Table 9. Correlation of respondents rating on blended learning as a multifactorial environment within the instructor's dimension and the level of self-efficacy of the select grade 12 senior high school students of the Santa Rosa Science and Technology High School. Table 10. Correlation of respondents rating on blended learning as a multifactorial environment within the technology dimension, the level of self-efficacy of the select grade 12 senior high school students in Santa Rosa Science and Technology High School. Good day, everyone. So we are here to present to you our research for the sixth cycle birth. I am Christian D. Tejeresas. And I am Agnes T. Torres of Tanawan City Integrated High School. Presenting to you our title, Career Guidance Program, Effectiveness and Awareness Level Towards Career Choices. For the introduction and rationale, Rule 5 of the Implementing Rules and Regulations of the Enhanced Basic Education Act of 2013 and Republic Act No. 11206, otherwise known as the Secondary Career Guidance and Counseling Act of 2019. For the research questions, number 1, what is the profile of the respondents in terms of age, gender, monthly family income, Grade 11, second semester general average. Question number two is, what is the level of understanding of students to the career developmental domain competency standards in terms of understanding the importance of knowledge, skills, and positive attitude helpful to daily living and their relation to life and profession? Number two, analyzing the relationship of one's skills and experiences 
in choosing a profession, vocation, and future. Applying the ability to choose their own field based on the different factors toward achieving goals in life and lastly, implementing steps towards the realization of chosen profession and vocation based on international standards. Question number three is, what does the planned curriculum exit of the student after graduation? Um, tertiary education, employment readiness orientation, entrepreneurial skills, middle level skills development orientation. Question number four, what is the extent of awareness of students with a reference to the following curriculum exits? Tertiary education, employment readiness orientation, entrepreneurial skills, middle level skills development orientation. Research question number five, is there a significant relationship between the respondent's profile to the chosen curriculum exit? Number six, is there a significant relationship between the student's level of understanding of career developmental domain, competency standards, and their awareness in the curriculum exits after basic education? For the conceptual theoretical framework, according to Nam Wayne of 2016, Having prior knowledge about a career is important to developing and nurturing interest in the career. Filipino students' career choice is influenced by Filipino values of family ties and genuine passion developed out of personal caregiving experience by Monte, Monte and Bandong of 2016. John Holland's theory of career choice helps explain what career choices are likely to lead to success on the job and job satisfaction. People choose to work in an environment like their personality type are more successful and satisfied. Also, he added that the people of the same personality type working together in a job create a work environment that fits their type. For the methodology, Sampling is ran, random sampling from grade 12 students of senior high school in the city schools of divisions of Tanawan. Data gathering method, students profile, curriculum exits, responses, ethical issues and concerns. Research instrument, validated researchers made questionnaires by the guidance counselor and career advocates includes grammatical and structural construction correction. Good day. I am Mr. Alan Andrew D. Gono, Teacher 3 from the City Schools Division of Tanawan, and I will be presenting now my study entitled Improving School-Based Research Management Framework in Balele Integrated High School Through Project Centuries, or the Center for Research and Innovations, Basis for an Improved Pattern of School-Based Research Management for Schools Division of Tanawan City. Let me start with my rationale. Research is utilized as an aid to any educational innovation and a tool for knowledge building. It is imperative to promoting evidence-based decision and policy making at different levels of school governance. The Association of Southeast Asian Nation, or the ASEAN Integration, in 2013 became a bridge towards a changing landscape of how education should be dealt with the 21st century among its nation members through RA10533, also known as the Enhanced Basic Education Act of 2013, more development in education was introduced, and one of it is research. Managing a research group in an increasingly challenge, is, a, is an increasingly challenging task. Creating a strategy that will lead to the best outcomes in terms of research impact or innovation requires a highly skilled set which frequently lies outside the experience of those chosen to lead, regardless of their professional distinction. Various DEPED orders were released to supplement the different mechanisms, like DEPED Order No. 4, Series 2016, also known as the Amendment to DEPED Order No. 43, Series 2015, or the Revised Guidelines for Basic Education Research Fund, and DEPED Order No. 16, Series 2017, 
wherein uh, it titled Research Management Guidelines, all the research committees were created to bring down the approach from the top of the line service to the downline, still the increasing gap can be seen in the system. It was found out that in every 10 teachers in public basic education sector, only one or two has an, has an interest in doing research. Numerous capacity building was launched and trainings were done to mitigate the problem, but still, the same old picture can be seen. Baleli Integrated High School has never been an exemption to this problem. It can be noted that for the last three years, research has been one of the most low domain, according to the SMEA. The trend and the interest of doing research was not developing for the last three years. This scenario posed problems in looking for a systematic answer on the underlying phenomenon that the school is experiencing. Balele Integrated High School, as the School of Innovation, felt that in order to develop the culture of research to its teaching and non-teaching personnel, a center that will train the teachers in the conceptualization and improvement of their practices through research-driven actions needs to be established. This idea paved the way to, for the creation of the Center for Research and Innovations, or the CENTRIS, in October 2020. With the declining number of research conducted in the school for the past six years, Centris sought to increase the number of proposed research by aiding and advising necessary steps for the improvement of the certain study. In order to link research-driven process with the creation of possible innovation, the center also seeks to align current practices in assuring quality innovation suited both the learners and other stakeholders. Let me now proceed to the key literature in my study. Let me start with the statement of the problem. The first question is, what are the constraints of teaching and non-teaching personnel of Balele Integrated High School about research management? Number two, how do teaching and non-teaching personnel of Balele Integrated High School perceive research management before and after the implementation of project centuries in terms of readiness, teachers' attitudes, and expectations? Good day, everyone. I am Evelyn N. Salem, together with my co-proponents, Ma'am Cheryl A. De La Cueva and Ma'am Nerisa P. Enriquez from SDO Tanawan City are here to present our study entitled Utilization of Project Spare to Enhance the Grade 2 Pupils' Reading Skills of Tapia Elementary School, School Year 2021-2022, basis for action plan. The purpose of our study is to assess the effectiveness of project spare to the learners' educational achievement amid pandemic and in accordance with a basic education learning continuity plan or the BELCP. Introduction Pursuant to DepEd Order number 12, Series 2020, as a school adapt to blended learning amid the COVID-19 pandemic, there is a growing concern over the widening communication gap regarding access to education and teachers' contact among students. The projects pair stakeholders' participation to achieve reading enthusiasts address the needs of the recipient through the help of stakeholders, which will be given support their studies amid the pandemic. Methodology. The study employed a descriptive analysis to measure the student's learning process and performance. 40 learners were the respondents. Self-made questionnaires was used and validated by the Education Program Supervisor of LRMDS or the Learning Resource Management Development System. Findings Supported the Department of Education on Bawat Bata Bumabasa or the Tribis Initiative, Division Memo No. 173, Series of 2019, implemented the usage of SPARE strategy, developed 
the good rapport and camaraderie between school and the community, and among learners, the habit of reading, so as an increased comprehension skill. Value Project SPARE is a reading program of Tapia Elementary School wherein it gives an opportunity to the parents, guardians to become a partner in raising and teaching their kids develop the love and habit of reading equipped with the different reading skills. It greatly contributes to the teaching personnel as well as the pupils because it supports distance learning modalities and it also designed as an alternative mode for teaching learning process during class suspension and other similar circumstances as our community was still under quarantine. Great day everyone, that may present my research when I was a nanay tatay upon this base go-to reading program for the new normal. To make every learner a reader by his or her grade level, This is the framework of the Quentin Batsaninan and Tatay Values Based Cultural Reading Program for the New Normal. Quasi experimental method of research was utilized in this study for 50 pupils, 30 parents of these pupils, 30 teachers, and 30 school headsters as respondents of the study. For the findings, the learner's reading level shows that the number of learners under frustration level decreased from 21 to 11, while learners under instructional level and independent level increased after using the Quentin Basa reading program. Another findings, the post-test is relatively higher than the pre-test, which means that the program is effective tool to enhance the reading level of the pupils in English and Filipino, which means that the instrument In terms of the level of acceptability of the reading program for the learners, parents, teachers, and students, the overall mean is 3.79, which is very much acceptable and acceptable. In terms of the level of acceptability of the reading material, the level of acceptability of the reading materials in terms of accuracy is 3.35, which is very adaptable and acceptable. The level of acceptability of the reading materials in terms of content which happened to be the reading innovation of this program was 3.67 which is very much adaptable and acceptable. The level of acceptability of reading instruction went from Masalina Naitatay. In terms of instructional design and organization of reading program was 3.65 or very much adaptable and acceptable. It pertains to the program and instructional emphasis, instructional Implications No child will be left behind or every learner will be a reader but his or grade level when there is when basa ni nanay tatay values based on for reading program for the new normal It focuses on explicit language instruction developing the attitudes of the reader skills and strategies they need to become independent and, 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 and moreover nurture a culture of Conclusions, Quentong Basa ni Nani Tatay Police Based Culture Reading Program for the New Normal is effective reading program since it can improve the reading literacy of the learners. Moreover, it is highly structured that the structured reading materials focus on specific skills that needs to be empowered to the learners. In the implementation of the reading program in the New Normal, forging partnerships Parents' participation should be strengthened to have an effective reading program. The use of localized reading materials and reading modules with variety of reading and exercises is also advised to improve the reading literacy of the learners. Recommendations adapt and utilize what you was a nanay especially improving learners' reading level and utilize it for the entire year, develop a reading Partnership, especially strength and parent support, and participation to the reading program, conduct similar studies, and conduct yearly evaluation of the reading performance of the learners. And the reading program, when the values-based culture reading program, is recommended to all schools in the division for adoption.
This is Lauren L. City Sagon from SD of Mayabas City. Thank you for listening. Hi, good afternoon. I am Joseph J. Oriada from the Division of Mayabas. My research study is entitled Influence of Teacher Understanding in the Implementation of Values Education Program. This study examines the relationship between values education implementation and teachers' understanding of values education strategies and skills in secondary school. In order to implement a values education program in the classroom, educators need to understand the strategies and skills of values education. Teachers who understand and feel self-confident in their abilities as values educators might help in their students' values formation and promote values education. There is a need to understand teacher understanding for values education to be able to effectively implement programs that integrate values education into the everyday school curriculum. Research by Rebel 2013 showed that there is a strong connection between values education and students' overall performance. The question that needs an answer is whether there is a relation between teachers' understanding on values education and their motivation to work well to face any obstacles faced during the implementation. Although there is a need to prepare teachers as values educators, very little empirical research has been done on the connection between values education implementation to teacher understanding. This study used a quantitative correlational design. The online survey was sent to 20 teachers in the five participating public schools in the division of Toyabas. Data was collected from values education teachers and analyzed using correlation statistics such as frequency distributions, person R, and one-way ANOVA. The survey was answered by 15 teachers. 93.33% were female. The vast majority belong to the age group 30 to 39 years or 66.67%. More than half of the teachers had no college coursework on values education or 53.33% and majority had attended less than two professional development workshops on values education or 60%. Majority of the teachers were educators who have been teaching for 0 to 5 years or 66.67% and very few who have been teaching for 11 years or more or 13.33%. This research question looked at whether secondary school teachers' understanding of values education strategies and skills affected their personal perceptions of values education and influenced values education implementation. This study showed a positive correlation, R equals 0.357 yielded a p-value p equals 0 0.000 between values education implementation and teachers' understanding of values education strategies and its skills such as class meetings and cooperative learning. Implications The higher the levels of understanding of the teacher, the more values education is implemented into the classrooms. These findings could be useful for administrators who develop professional development programs to support and guide teachers to integrate values education in their daily curriculum. In conclusion, from the data analyzed in this study, in order to improve on and promote effective values education implementation, schools need to focus on improving teacher understanding of values education through opportunities from training and professional development. The role of teachers cannot be deemed minor in developing good values among students. This study shines light on the important role of teachers and how their understanding and professional influences bias education implementation. This study was a step in an effort to empower all teachers in order to build and implement successful and sustainable values education program. Recommendations First, this study should be replicated in the elementary school setting because the variables identified in this study could be tested to see if the results are the same. Second, a quantitative study should be done to compare and correlate teacher perceptions of values education according to subject area taught 
to determine if teachers who teach disciplines such as math and science might have different perceptions on implementing bias education into the classroom than teachers who do not teach these classes. Thank you and God bless. Good day, everyone. So we are here today to present our research entitled Utilization of Pivot Learners Packet or LEAP for Quarter 3 and Quarter 4 in Edukasyon sa Pagpapakatao in Region Calabarzon for the school year 2020-2021. The content of this presentation are as follows. So we have the introduction, methodology, results and discussion, conclusion and recommendation. For the introduction, the learner's packet was the response of the Region Calabarzon on the mandate of the Department of Education upon the issuance of DepEd Memo Number 18, Series of 2020, or the Policy Guidelines for the Provision of Learning Resources in the Implementation of the Basic Education Learning Continuity Plan during the height of the pandemic. Our objective for this research is to examine the usability of Pivot Learner's Packet, or LEAP, in terms of its usefulness, ease of use, easy of learning, sufficient number of activities, and satisfaction. This research or study is significant to learners, teachers, parents or guardians, school, and future researchers. As for our methodology, our respondents, we have a total number of 2,337 respondents who participated in the online survey. Learners, ESP teachers, and parents or guardians comprise the respondents. This study was exploratory type due to the limited references for this is the first research on this topic. We also used a self-made survey form to gather data and focus group discussion. For statistical treatment, gathered data were tabulated and inspected for accuracy, used SPSS computer program where frequencies and percentages were computed. Sir? For the results and discussion, we have five indicators. And these are in terms of usefulness, ease of use, ease of, easy of learning, sufficient number of activities per lesson, and then the satisfaction. For usefulness, we have 1,355. And that would be 58%. The ease of use would be 1,449, and that is 62%. For ease of learning, we have 1,449, and that would be 62% also. For the sufficient number of activities per lesson, we have 1,449, and that is 62% also. For the satisfaction, we have 1,402, and that would be 60%. So based on the result, the respondents agreed that the LEAP is useful, easy to use, the lessons and instructions are easy to understand, activities provided are sufficient, and they are satisfied using it. So with that, we've concluded that the Pivot Learners Pocket as learners material in education sa pagpapakatao is useful, easy to use, easy to understand, the activities are sufficient, and has met the respondent's satisfaction. However, we would like to recommend the following. One would be to conduct a study across the different learning areas to validate the claim of the usability of LEAP. And the second one would be to study on the LEAP's significant contribution vis-a-vis -vis learners' study habits and independent learning. With this, we would like to thank everyone and say God bless. And that concludes our 2022 virtual conference of basic education researchers. 
Thank you very much and congratulations to all our presenters. Saludo po kami sa inyong lahat. A special thanks to the following. Regional Director, Attorney Alberto T. Escobarte Seso II, Assistant Regional Director, Cherry Lou D. Repia, Schools Division Superintendents, Regional Research Committee, Schools Division Research Committee, Senior Education Program Specialists for Planning and Research, Public Affairs Unit, ICT Unit headed by Sir Ray Valenzuela, and special thanks to Sir Sherman Villasanta. And of course, to the Policy Planning and Research Division family, headed by our Chief, Madam Vyernalin M. Nama. See you next year for our 2023 Conference of Basic Education Researchers. This has been your host, Jumar M. Sadsad, Planning Officer 3 in Charge of Research Management. Bye!